pizza right now. We're talking about the game of dominoes. And, uh, and one of the things you will find in a domino game that we talk about is when the game is what? When somebody quote the game. And in order for that to happen, what must happen? Talk to me now, domino players. Somebody mix matches something. You put a six where a five is. And sometimes the worst part is Elder Nigel. You don't even recognize that the game was quoted until you're about to win the game. You know? So the game has to start what? All over again. So quoting the game means that you are actually giving the impression that the game is going right according to the rules or the standards of Domino. But somebody draw one wrong card and then mash up the thing. Are we together? I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that in the spiritual realm, a game of dominoes has been taking place. And somebody has caught the game because they have placed a wrong card and expect the people to still believe that the game is is quite in order but tonight uh, we are gonna look at it in details what do you say there are so many churches in the world and many people ask themselves why are there so many churches uh, uh, is it that um, anywhere you go and you find a church you just worship because church a church uh, elder um, evangelist Kelly you hear people say that when well, you know said the one God the will allow you serve isn't that a popular one uh, and it sounds very good uh, on the surface of things brother Tucker but does it really go like that? Uh, do you qualify to worship anyway once it is that you acknowledge that you are serving the God of heaven? Or does the God of heaven require worship according to a certain standard? We're going to go to the word of God. Are we together? So many churches, which is right. Who called the game? Let us look at some key texts. Are we together now? Um, Luke eleven twenty eight. Let's read aloud, everybody. Blessed are some people can't read well in the night because of them eyes. So when you read aloud, they will hear the text. Come on now. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and obey it. Let's go to another key text. John twenty ten. John ten twenty seven twenty eight. My sheep what hear my voice and I know them and they what follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall anyone what snatch them out of my hand and last night as we talked about the holy spirit uh, and who gets the holy spirit uh, we settle the fact that you're not fit tarry in order to get the holy spirit uh, you need to be willing to walk in the what truth uh, and after the day of pentecost experience in acts chapter 2 not very long from that the bible tells us that Peter and the apostles declare to the people what you need to do to get the Holy Ghost. Go to Acts 5.32 and read it everybody. And we are what? Witnesses to these things and so also is the what? The Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who speak in tongues. Those who can't see the screen, look wrong, look wrong. Come again, come again, come again. I can't pass this one. I'm getting into the word now, Elder Reed. Come again. And we are witnesses to what? These things. Hear the apostles talking, you know. And so also is the what? The Holy Spirit. Ah, there goes the third member of the Godhead. How do you get him? It's not tongue speaking. Read it now. Whom God has given to those who do what? Obey. Obey him. How can God promise to give you the Holy Spirit upon obedience if he not give you something for obey? Come on, church of God. How can somebody tell whether or not you are obedient if he has not given you a standard that you must obey? Come on, church of God. I said the word of God is true. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Uh, we talked about kingdoms one night and how God way in advance in the Cameron outlined uh, the, the, the kingdoms of the world and the order in which they would reign. Uh, they were so spot on, uh, Brother Brown, uh, that some skeptics believe uh, that Daniel's book uh, was written after the fact. Uh, but when the scientific application of testing the age of writings uh, was applied, uh, they, were dis they, they were actually um, discomposed Related when they discovered that Daniel was written before the facts. If my God could have told us way in advance, centuries in advance, that after Babylon would come another kingdom. What's the name of that kingdom, everybody? The Persian kingdom. And after Persia, another kingdom. What's the name of that kingdom, people? The Greeks, Greece. And after Greece, another kingdom. What's the name of that kingdom, people? Rome. And after that, there's a divided kingdom. But Rome in the initial stage was a pagan kingdom 
kingdom and by pagan it means that it was just a worldly kingdom during the time of Christ the Roman Empire was the one that ruled the world but very soon they recognize that it doesn't matter how they tried to destroy God's people God's people were prospering so eventually for political gain Rome decided to take on a new identity so it moved from that of paganism to if you may papalism and we are going to get into that so it put on a religious front in order for political gain and also to carry out the devil's agenda follow me now speaking of the fourth kingdom the bible tells us that he shall speak pompous words against the what the most high and not only so shall persecute the what the saints and shall intend to change times and laws God gave the same vision of Daniel using beast in chapter 7 and then it, it indicates that this fourth kingdom is not going to be a normal kingdom it's going to do a number of things it is going to what speak pompous words against the most high that means this is a kingdom that will what fly up in the face of god the kingdom will also what persecute the saints who do you call saints uh, those who are what walking in a saving relationship uh, with jesus christ uh, and shall intend to change what times and laws but what authority could an organization derive uh, to have the audacity to change god's times and god's laws uh, are you ready to go into the world with the preacher tonight come on wave your hand if you're ready to get into the word of God what authority you see in Matthew chapter 16 Jesus had asked the disciples whom do men say what that I the son of man am he says when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying who do you um do men rather say that I the son of man am some say that you are John the Baptist some Elijah and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets and he said to them but who do you say that I am in other words every man ought to know Jesus for himself your granny righteousness can save you your husband righteousness can't cover you everyone has to know jesus for himself herself so at the end of the day yes you can tell me what people say about jesus but what do you have to say about jesus so simon peter the chatty chatty he was not yet converted but him did a comma because notice god never called perfect men but he perfects them come on church of god that is why you don't have to wait until you have everything down Potter, to come to jesus christ he will fix you as you go along day by day and with each passing moment don't let the devil tell you that you are not perfect enough if you were perfect enough you would not need a savior it is because we bad from we born we need the christ to transform us so I said, whom do you say that I am? And sister, see, sister Philippi, my sister-in-law, who is also celebrating her birthday, my wife is a twin. It says here, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, come on now church, read it. Blessed art thou, what? Simon bar Jonah, or son of Jonah. Bar means son of her. Why did Jesus say that in flesh? Listen, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. Peter, don't think that you learned that in school. You never got that because you have a degree. That one was just given you through divine inspiration. Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. But my father who is what? In heaven. Notice Jesus acknowledges that there is not only himself, but there is also the father in what? Heaven. And every inspiration happens through the Holy Spirit. There is father, son, and what? Holy Spirit. And I say to you, you are Peter. And Jesus, <laughs> as a skillful teacher, was plain and word, Sister Fiona. Because the word Peter means stone. <laughs> Petros. He said, you are Peter. Well, it was stone when we put in a slingshot and short border. Come on, somebody. And on this rock, the word for rock is Petra. You think, sir, you all want to have speech? How God makes speech. And I learned that last night. <laughs> so Jesus said, you are Peter. In other words, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you. So Peter, before you believe that, it's because you're big and you're smart and you're bright. Why you were able to tell me that answer? You are just Petrus, a rolling stone, but on this rock, I know that. Can you imagine when Jesus said this rock in the sun? 
Come on, church of God. Come again. Let's practice it with some action. So Jesus said unto him, You are Peter. Point the man. You are Peter. And they bought upon what? This rock. He knocked himself. I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's why the composer wrote, The church has one foundation. This Jesus Christ, her Lord. And he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. See it here. Some claim that Peter was the first pope. And they said that when Jesus spoke these words to Peter, Jesus handed to Peter, the first pope, the keys of heaven and hell. And say, look here, anything you bind down ya, I say go up there. And anything you loose down ya, I say go up there. Let me tell you something, Sister Abigail. If I did so you go, somehow we mash up. Hello, somebody. Can you imagine if God gave men the keys of heaven and hell? When they don't like you, you're just born. Hello, somebody. When they spirit not take you, you're just born. I am glad to know that a man doesn't determine my destiny. I'm glad to know that a woman doesn't determine my salvation. Only Jesus can determine it for me and I thank God because men love carry belly and some people don't care how long they have the belly they not let it go some are carry belly so long elder stay up they not remember what they cause the belly Hello, when we say carry belly, those who are online, meaning that they are carrying a grudge, you know, forever, not, not a literal belly, a grudge. So follow me now. They claim that Peter was the first pope, and God gave him the keys. But watch this now. What Jesus was saying to Peter is that when you are walking in harmony with my will, then what happens? Whatsoever I desire in heaven, that is what you will do on hurt. Hurt doesn't have the power to do something and say, God, put that in your book. It doesn't go from earth up it comes from heaven down come on church of god so jesus never gave peter authority to buy nothing that jesus would bind when you are in oneness you don't say one author says ellen white she says that when the will of man cooperates with the will of god it becomes omnipotent because once you are aligned with the spirit of god the spirit of god will direct you in the ways of god that's what you do will be keeping with what uh, the laws of God come on church so there's a Peter first pope then Peter but watch the first pope so Peter feel good now elder Kelly they say, Lord, I can't imagine they were converted yet you know so some of them must see all jealous say I never them get the answer so we can imagine John face long and James did their screw up in face and Peter feel big and bossy because Jesus just told me <laughs> that boy flesh and blood never reveal oh Jesus uh, do you mean that God just spoke to me hallelujah so after that no Peter for a moment forgot that listen the higher the monkey climbed the more he exposed uh, and in the moment of a little light commendation uh, Peter got full of himself and Satan took over listen to what happened Jesus was now explaining to Peter and the apostles that he came to die for brother Pottinger's sin and Lincoln sin, friendship sin simply put, the sins of the world and he began to outline And how he's going to die. But he's going to rise again up. And the rise again on the what? On the third day. And Peter stepped in and said, God, not over my dead body. So here verse 22. Peter thinks sent on God father. <laughs> you, you, you know Just because Jesus told him that you got the answer right. Flesh and blood didn't give you. Peter get bossing now. And things sent on God father. So Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. What ya? Say, far be from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. So answer me. If Jesus is not dead for me, sin, I will go dead for you. must me. So listen now. But he turned and said to Peter. Follow me now. Follow me now. The word of God deep now. He turned. He who? He, Jesus, turned and said to Peter. Read it aloud, church. Get thee behind me, Satan. By the way, how who did I talk again, everybody? Peter, so who Jesus is supposed to talk to? Now, Peter, let me tell you something. Anybody who you see speaking and acting antithetically or in opposition to the word of God, you know who send them. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, you never heard the preacher tonight. Yeah. You know, you know, some people then just antagonistic. Uh, and some say, Why do they behave this way? Uh, don't look at the flesh which you see. It is the power that they've allowed to take them over. Though Peter was the vessel, Satan was the instrument. Uh, Satan took over Peter. And Jesus recognized that Peter could be the same Peter that knew that I am the Son of God a while ago. So he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. I see and we have to rebuke some people sometimes. Get thee behind me, Satan. Why? You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of what? God, but of the things of what? Men. Anybody who's not mindful of God, the things of Satan, I use them. So watch me now. So Peter was no pope. Peter was a rolling stone. And when they came to arrest Jesus, the same Peter was saying, Though none go with thee. <laughs> Still I will for you run God. And when one girl said, hey, you look like one of them disciples for He said, me, let me tell you two clout. And I was like, yes, you, 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 you sound like one of them. You know, like people draw me out to them. And this one he denied Jesus three times. What did he hear? Ah, 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 ah. And that the Peter there. You want to give Jeremy and John some salvation for Will and Pan? Hello, people of God. Come on and let the word of God talk truth. So Jesus says, John 14, 15, come on now, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now most people obey the commands even though they claim that they are no longer binding. No, let nobody fool you. Because if I think you're bad, take what the man will tell us that the commandments are no longer binding because we're under grace. Take what your wife. I see if you're not in, in, in a lash out against your adultery. Tell your child to wash the plate. And the child said, Me not wash no dirty plate. And only I'm out of plate and give me if you wash, wash your own plate. Right now I'm taking up for me. Anything and I'm out of, you wash. And for the pots, we will take turns. What are you going to say as a parent? You, you, you're lucky that the commandment that says thou shalt honor your mother and father is nailed to the cross. Otherwise, I would not grab your heel there, you see? Don't make nobody fool you. You can't say commandments are what nailed to the cross, and yet you are vexed that scammers exist. Hello, somebody. Yet you long up your face and get cross when people tell lies on you. Yet you don't like bad mind people or covetous people. So how comes you so caught up in the commandments? I just said they nailed to the cross. Let me tell you something. Under the ten commandments are them problem, are the fourth commandment. Who caught the game? Let's go back to the history of it. Elder um, Kelly, I spoke about um, the, the principle of origination last night. Whenever you want to understand the concept clearly, it is best, Sister Stephanie, to go right back to the place that it was first broached. Uh, are we together now? Jump over to Genesis chapter 2, 1 to 3. The Bible says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were what? Finished. And on the seventh day, which day, everybody? The seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done and what did he make on the sixth day everybody men and a monkey make you look too beautiful and handsome for that he made everything and on the seventh day god rested from his work then god did what verse three blessed it talk to me church tell me what did god do blessed the seventh day and what sanctified it why because in it he rested from all his work which god had created and made god doesn't get tired to rest but god was establishing a principle and an example come on now no question when god created the sabbath and the seventh day of creation who were the people living on the earth adam and who let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, the first two seventy Adventists were one man and one woman. Were Adam and Eve Jews? I thought somebody said that it is made for Jews. Let me tell you something, man. Even during the time of Noah, guess what? I know Abraham no born. You know how old Adam was when he died? Somebody tell me. Nine hundred and what? Nine hundred and what? 930 nearly 1000 years and I oh, know no Abraham no born <laughs> you know how old Noah was when the flood came tell me somebody 600 and I oh, know no Abraham no born how you know a pastor how many people went into the ark Shem, Ham, Japheth, Noah and their four wives eight of them are after flood that the man near Abraham come hello somebody so how somebody say a Jews he make for no make nobody fool you mister when you leave here you must get certificate <coughs> 
So watch me now. That is why when the people of God were taken into captivity in Egypt for hundreds of years, God knows, say, look here, a whole heap of ignorance did the brother Najif. Because when people are enslaved, part of the enslavement is not just the cruelty to them, but mental enslavement in order to condition them. So the children born in Egypt were born to the Egyptian ungodly standards of worshipping false gods and all sorts of false doctrines. So when God was leading them now, brother Matthew, to the promised land, God had to re-educate them. So listen to what he says in Exodus chapter 20, 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You can't tell somebody if you remember something where you never tell them, Sister Richard. If you call Matthew and say, Matthew, yes, mommy, remember to pick up the thing out of the shop. And you never tell Matthew if you take up not, not a shop. Matthew, Matthew go say, I'm Matthew, you talk to you now. I say, so excuse me. Of course, me know say, Matthew, you talk to Mommy, you never tell me nothing about no shop. So God said, what? Remember. Look here, my God has a sense of humor now. All the commandments were, thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt. Why did God say remember? God knew that many would forget. Hello, somebody? Listen now. Let's read it together. I'm going places. Remember the Sabbath day to what? Keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do what? All your work. But the seventh day is the Adventist day. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. What? Your God. So if you claim that God are your father, who, uh, you must follow him. In it, you shall not do what? Any work. You now, your son, now your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, your stranger who is within your gates. Why, Lord? Why? Because Ochiris is a good business day on Saturday. Now. Why, Lord? You know, it's a good day to go and make some money. Come, Lord. And it's a nice day to go to the beach because I have to work five days a week. God, give me an excuse. Uh, a good reason, rather. A rational. For in six days... The Lord what made what the heavens and the earth. You notice where God is going back to creation. Anybody can say then God said this and then God said that. My God said enough to kill, no steal. But guess what? To distinguish God from the idols, God uses the Sabbath to remind people. Say, look, you at the end of the day. You see that piece of stone where you worship, where you cut out into an idol and mimic his stone. You see that piece of wood where you worship, where you cut out into an idol and mimic your wood. Hello, somebody. Six days the Lord made heaven and earth. It's not a big bang theory. Hello, somebody. So revolution upon an evolution. The sea and all that is in them. And rest them the what? The seventh day. Therefore the Lord what? Bless the Sabbath and hallowed it. How must God bless something and you break it and expect to get a blessing? Could you too? So is the seventh day, question, an individual thing or is it a set day of each week? Does anybody, if, does everyone get to determine? Some people say, well, today I feel me seven day. Can me start work on Wednesday or me start work on Monday? In Exodus chapter 16, we find a story about the manna. You remember manna? A manna, say manna. Sometimes when people sing in the song and they, they must sing in a proper English, they spoil it. I'm feasting on heavenly manna. It's manna. So watch this now. Listen to what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 16 verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, come with me to see if the Sabbath is an individual day or a set day. Listen now. It says now, uh, behold, I will raise down what bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota when every day that i may do a church test them whether they will walk in my law or not and it shall be on the sixth day what day the sixth day they shall prepare what they will bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily so god said each day you must take up enough for each day but when it comes to the sixth day because it is known as the preparation day for the seventh day which is the sabbath day god said anything you have baked adventist you must be upon the sixth day anything you are cooked adventist you must cook from the sixth day. Anything you are boil, boil from the sixth day. You're not saying amen to the preacher right now. Because listen, the Bible says you must prepare from the sixth day. So what you know? Notwithstanding, verse 20, some did not heed Moses, but some of them left part of it until morning. Why? Distrust. Because they never trusted God. They said, look here, me not trust him. Because me, I put on somebody, someone there. Because, let me tell you now. Listen now, this is in the week, you know. In the week, God tell them, so they must pick up what? Enough for me and for that day, they to eat for that day. But on the sixth day, God said, you can't leave some over till the next day. But from the start, the first day, 
Some decide to look here. Right and now, more time you hear some boy water, more than flour. So I don't know if bread is going to be available. So I are work with what I see right now. So put some of this for Sunday morning at the shed pan. But some left some of it till morning. And the Bible says, and the bread what? Worms and stank. When you're disobedient to the word of God, things gonna stink in your life. And Moses was angry with them. So they gathered it every morning, every man according to his need. And when the sun was hot, it melted. But watch the day six now. And on the sixth day, the Bible says, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Read church, read church. Tomorrow is a Sabbath of rest. Ah. Holy Sabbath to the Lord. God can make someone holy. And you know, notice that everything that God characterizes as holy, the enemy is tossing it aside. When God made man and woman, He says that marriage is what holy. Right? And now they say anything you want. Take some there with animal, some there with man with man, woman with woman, and there's a confusion in the place. Spirits of devils. God said this Sabbath is holy. People said dash for that. And yet they're still asking them holy. And after you dash with God's holy things, you're going to come to church, holy, holy, holy. And not only that, many of the churches who claim to be God's organizations are now giving leeway for people who are practicing same sex. Many of the prominent churches in Jamaica, the only reason why they have not started to officiate it here is because the government has not yet given them the green light. And let me tell you, you know, they're too far. Hello, somebody? Everything that God calls holy, you have some people that dash it. He shall think to change what? Times and laws. That's why the Bible says that everyone who says, Lord, Lord, by their fruits you shall what? Know them. So here, God, it is holy. <coughs> to the Lord, bake what you will bake today. See, they are getting a deltis. Sunset 6 15 these days. Go up and Google on the smartphone and check your sunset time. Some say the Sabbath starts 6 o'clock. It's not 6 o'clock indefinitely, depending on its sunset. Because in creation, the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. In our modern times, we use the midnight now in order to measure it. But in God's way of measuring, it's sunset to sunset. So now you know why the Adventists then run in on Friday evening. Adventists prepare for the Lord's Sabbath. You know what the Lord says must do? Bake what you will bake. When church? Today. That's on the Friday now. Boil what you will boil. When? today and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept till the morning only when god commanded that it could be left over saturday let me know you think sunday monday nice the sunday monday they pile a friday saturday nice <laughs> watch it on so they laid it up till morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, Sister Velita Brown. And as God, because what they did as God commanded, and nor were worms in it. Then Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a what? Sabbath. Not to the pastor, not to the Adventist church. To the what? The Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Yeah, yeah, what if you do? You shall not find it in the field. So you're not supposed to go, oh, she got jog up and got Sabbath. I have some Adventists, I'm preaching to everybody, you know. Some Adventists come to church in the morning. And then they go on a Ochi and sentence beer. And even money with the other city on Sabbath afternoon. They can't wait for some good on, but then go on down. Get quiet for me inside of this place, yeah. And when some Adventists book up on one another in a progressive and in a champion on Friday night, uh, you know. And then they can't say happy Sabbath to the brothers. <laughs> Can't say happy Sabbath, Sister Alicia. So they can say, hello, good evening, Sister Anderson. Sister Anderson, no, then I know what they tell you. She died, you had a worship. You know, good evening, Sister Anderson. Oh, you're doing Brother John, so good evening. Then no, I say happy Sabbath. And then we we'll say, hey, neither of us is supposed to be here. Advent is a time for we get back to the standards. Hello, somebody. Can, 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 can I preach it like how I feel it up here? Let me tell you, Elder Reader, you know, the more things become simple, is the more difficult we make our lives. Back in the days, when you have to use coal iron, for iron your clothes, clothes press from Friday morning. Now you have electric steam iron, and some can't press till Sabbath morning. Back in the days, brother, we are some. When you have to chop lagoda, chop all sort of wood, and make fire. 
poor beat me by midday. Stew done stew by three o'clock. Rice and peas have little ginger for preserve it overnight. Juice done juice and put down. And then you sit down on veranda and wait for sunset to say welcome. Welcome. I know that we have electric stove. Gas stove. You can't don't cook to sap. Back in the days when people have to walk with Elder James and beat them ten commandments, walk from Clover and figure church and money, walk from Walkers would figure out Lincoln, then reach church by time. Now we have care how you're still late for church. The word of God is a two edged sword, so everybody get chopped. time for us to get back to the standard and some Adventist gives the Lord Sabbath bad name because we claim to be a bona fide born again member of the Seventh-day Adventist church and yet our neighbors our friends and converted family members see us and do things on Sabbath when we do cock up in a city and watch movie and stuff on Sabbath hello somebody hello don't get quiet in church, church watch me now watch me now so they laid it up till morning. They both say, eat it. You shall not find it today. That's why Adventists don't go shop on Sabbath. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. The Bible keeps on and say what? Seven day, seven day, seven day. But which day, seven day? I want a child to come up. A child in grade four or five. Come. Anyone? Any grade four or grade five child? Come, run. Who want come? Run, come. Oh, come. Give him a big game in the man. <coughs> you come. Amen. Greetings. What is your name? Devante Williams. Devante Williams. Did we plan this? Did I ask you to do this tonight? Yes. When? <laughs> yes, sir. No, let me answer. When? Just a while ago. When did I ask you? Just a while ago. Not before a while ago? No. Good. Which school do you attend? Camperdown Primary and Infant School. Nice school in the hilltop there. Camperdown Primary and Infant School. What grade are you in? Five. Tell them the days of the week as you learned it in school. What is this? Preach now. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Which day is the third day? Tuesday. Ah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Which day is the first day? Preach. They can't, they can't talk to you tonight, you know. Because you have to preach tonight. You're evangelist Devante Williams. Sunday. Which, which day is the first day? Sunday. Which day is the sixth day? Friday. Which day is the seventh day? Saturday. You have done well. Come to me next week. Forget one phone call. To me if you have no phone, put your hands together for the bright boy. <clears throat> if your child ever comes home from school, when he is of a certain age or she is of a certain age, they say, "Come here, pick me. Tell me the days of the week." And they tell you anything but what little Devante just told you. A hell in there. Let me tell you, so how come some people say Elder Melbourne? Well, nobody knows which day is the seventh day of the week. You know, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you, man. I'll tell people for fool. Everybody knows. Thank you very much, Evangelist Devante. So watch me now. The seventh day, the Sabbath day shall be what? None. Now it happened that some of the people went out of the people out of the camp of the seventh day together, but they found none. You see your rebellion there? Sister Hines, when God tell them, say they must not put on none overnight, then put it on and it stink. Now God tell them, say if you put on some from Friday, and you, and you must have enough from Friday for Saturday. And for the first time, Sister Anderson, it never stank. So people say, I'm going to see if nothing goes off it too. And still gone out, they're going to look for it. You see how the spirit of rebellion is strong? And you still have it in our society. But they found none. And the Lord said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? God wants to ask somebody tonight, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? 
For the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore he gives you on the sixth day bread for two days. Let every man remain in his place. Uh, and let what? Uh, no man go out of his place. On the what? Seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. So is the Sabbath an individual day that everybody gets to choose personally? If that were the case, how would Moses manage the hundreds of thousands of Israelites? Moses would have to keep a registry to say, oh, Sister Anderson's week begins on a Monday, so her Sabbath is Sunday. Brother Brian Brown, is, oh, he starts his week on a Tuesday, so his Sabbath is a Monday. Make sure that you don't see Brown out there on a Monday. Let me tell you, Bridget, Papi show business. The seventh day is not an individual day. It is a set day! But what about the Sabbath in relation to the other commandments, Sister Brenica? Uh, uh, James 2, 10 to 11. Come on, church of God. For whoever shall keep uh, the whole law and yet stumble in what? One point, he's guilty of what? All! For the same God who said that you commit adultery. And the same God said that you must not what? Murder. The same God who said you must honor your mother, your father. And the same God who says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Don't let anybody fool you. And it doesn't matter what church you come from. You know, I'm not here to tear you down. I'm here to tear down lies. I love you. Regardless of where you worship. And who you worship. So I'm not here to tear down people. Don't vex with the preacher. Vex with the false doctrine. Hello, somebody. So watch me now. Exodus 31. And the Lord said to Moses, Speak also to the children of Israel. Verse 13. Saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep. Surely. For it is a what? A sign. We'll talk more about that um, down in the series. A sign between me and you throughout your what? Generation. Pastor, me and an Israelite in Jesus Christ. And Israel is not one born of Abraham. We are now Jews after the what? The heart. For we are now spiritual Israel. Throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who what? Sanctifies you. Every week you keep the Sabbath. You are saying, God, and you sanctify me. Anytime you go market on Sabbath, you are fly up in God's face. Like the people, then we go look man up on Saturday. The Bible says in Acts, at the time of your ignorance, Brother Bartley, God winks. Everybody blink your eye. But now commanded all men everywhere to what? Repent. Whether you don't know the truth, God not go while you're guilty. But may I reveal truth tonight. Come on, church of God. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is what? Holy to you. Everyone who profanes it uh, shall be put to death. Uh, so some of us say, Pastor, because nobody now dead for Sabbath again, that means it's not good again. It wasn't only Sabbath you, that you were killed for in those days. Murderers were put to death. Liars were put to death and other sins. But listen, judgment delayed is not judgment denied. There was a time as you slip your slide. But now in the era, in the kingdom of grace, God is giving men time to get them house in order. And some people still are flying up in God's face. Don't you take the goodness and patience of God for granted. Watch it now, may I go somewhere, now may I go somewhere. Jump on, jump on, jump on. Um, Isaiah 40 verse 8. The Bible says, the grass withers, uh, the flower falls, uh, but the word of God uh, stand what? Forever! What happened to the people who are preaching in Holy Ghost, they claim, and telling you that the Sabbath doesn't matter. Jesus has a word for them through Isaiah 8 verse 20. Come on, church. Uh, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not uh, according to this word, Mammy Cherry, it is because uh, there is no light in them. Some dress in a some big cheapy suit, but a darkness. Uh, some have a some long gown. Uh, darkness. Uh, gold chain and big cargo and ring. Uh, darkness. Uh, long more boot. Uh, darkness. Uh, if they don't speak according to the word. Uh, darkness. Hmm. The New Living Translation says, uh, look to God's instructions and teachings. Same verse. People who contradict his work are completely in the dark. Uh, Ezekiel also adds his voice. Moreover, Ezekiel 20, 12. Uh, uh, moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a what? Sign. 
between them and me. Read the rest of Ezekiel 20 and you will see the rest of it. Straight through it. And by the way, not done yet. Watch verse 14 now in the same passage. But I acted for my name's sake that it should not be profaned before the Gentiles. Hello? Hello? So those who are of the household of faith must not profane God's Sabbath before the what? The Gentiles. Because God wants the Gentiles to see your Sabbath keep. If the Gentile next door to you, and Gentiles here is no longer one who is a Greek. Once upon a time, Jews were those of what? The, the descendants of Abraham. And Gentiles were, number one, preponderantly speaking, original meaning, one who is a Greek. But then by the wider meaning, anybody who was outside of Israel. You, have, you don't have, I'm a physical Gentile now. What you have is what? Spiritual Israel. Those who are obedient to the laws of God, born again and transformed by the grace of Christ. And you have spiritual what? Gentiles. You can't make your gentile neighbor here you are doing the same things then we are doing throughout the week on sabbath you're profaning it before the gentiles come on now in whose sight i had brought them out so i also raised my hand in an oath to them in the wilderness that it would not what i would not bring them into the land which i had given them flowing with milk and honey israel never reached into the land in the timeline that they were to reach there originally why because they were disobedient to god's sabbath some of we bad broken because we have been disobedient to God's Sabbath and His commandments. Hello, somebody. Jump over, Pastor. Jump on, jump on. Isaiah. I'm going somewhere with all of it. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. Who called the game? We'll get him there, Elder Shaw. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath. I would have your foot on something in me, say I do what? Tell me, trample it. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a what? A delight. The holy of the day, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall what? Honor him. Not doing what? Doing your own ways. When you come at church on Sabbath, you can't behave like in the week. Not finding your own what? Pleasure. You know, if you do a suit, you can't then worship, cock up on phone, and on the Bible you read, and you're there on phone, on WhatsApp. What's that? Hello, church of God. Not speaking your own words. When you talk on Sabbath at the appropriate time, it must be religious matters, salient to the day. And when somebody wants to say, girl, you know, you I'm not watching Wednesday, sunset for that. That's all you know. Come practice it. Come, sunset for that. Come, lift up your hand and try. Come, sunset for that. Come one more time. Sunset for that. We have to help some people to save their own soul. Hello, somebody. Listen, God says, if you do that and then delight yourself in the Lord, I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the mouth, with what the heritage of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Signature. Some of you have got somewhere with it. When did Jesus Christ go to church? A Christian is one who follows Christ. You can't claim to be a Christian and you're not follow God. Am I talking to somebody? When did Christ go to church? Somebody go. Number one, Mark 2, 27, 28. Let's read it aloud. And he, Jesus, said to them, the disciples and the, the Pharisees, the Sabbath was made for man. Not for Jews, but for man as in mankind. Come on now. And not man for the what? The Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the what? Of the Sabbath. So when you talk about the Lord's Day, visitors, the Lord's Day is every day I got to make it you know. But the Lord's Day is the seventh day. This is Jesus speaking. So how come some people call Sunday the Lord's Day? That is not biblical. And if you can come and prove otherwise, you'll get the mic to preach. Luke 4, 16. I said, when did Jesus go to church? Let's go. So he, he who everybody, Jesus, came to Nazareth, Sister Jocelyn, where he had been brought up. And as is what? Custom was. When you say somebody have a custom, Sister Richards, what do you mean? It is a regular practice, Brother Curtis. As his custom was, Brother Keys, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. 
today and stood up to read and a champion a champion him go and a margarita villain go and a fantasy beach him go and a kingston him go a church him go and to show said never just come and catch a back bench and that he was a regular member he was also given the privilege to what to read I have a question for you tonight. Where are you on Sabbath? Don't answer me. Where are you on Sabbath? Me not done yet. Come on now. Let's get into the lesson. There are eight texts in the New Testament that talk about the first day of the week. And none of them sanctions the change of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And tonight, we are going to examine them one by one somebody say one by one you ready write them down write them down come on how matthew 28 verse 1 not you matthew richards matthew 28 verse 1 read now now after the sabbath brother fullerton as the first day of the week began to dawn notice i put it in red mary magdalene and the other mary came to see the tomb <laughs> in other words whichever day is sabbath whenever it done the first day start Come on, Horace. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me tell you, man, the Heavenly Father, even as I continue preaching this word, I pray that somebody who might be prejudiced because of how this might go against what they once held to be the truth uh, will get the eyesol. Just give them the spirit of objectivity that they will lay aside their preconceptions, even for the duration of the message, to just listen to the word of God with an open mind uh, that they might make an intelligent decision decision i pray in jesus name <coughs> i have a cough me i have a cough and preach me a cough and preach tonight after the sabbath as the first day of the week began notice the bible has already established times and again that what the sabbath is the what the seventh day so let me tell you something my week cannot include sunday When you have like Easter Monday holiday, I soon come back to that Elder Clifford. People say, we're going to have a long weekend, weekend past Saturday. The week starts when Evangelist Devante, Sunday! So after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to what? Dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And you know that this is talking about what? Jesus was dead and they went home and came back after Sabbath to look for the tomb for just up the body and there was a resurrection. We soon come to that. That I'm Matthew. Let's go now to Mark. Mark 16, 1 and 2. Same story and the way some different apostles. Ready? Now, when the Sabbath was passed, <laughs> you see, if one man said to my question, it's an elder angel. But when several people are saying the same thing, how oh, you must read the Bible and pass it. You can't miss it. And I know some are listening right across Phoenix Park. And we are greetings to you all in the name of Jesus. And housing scheme. The hands are up there because everybody is going to hear this truth tonight. Those in Pakistan and India and Africa and you. United States of America and Canada right across Jamaica and the other countries across the Caribbean from where you are watching and the United Kingdom listen to the word of God tonight now when the Sabbath was passed Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought what spices that they might come and anoint him Jesus that is very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen did either of the first two texts that I shared tell you that no Sabbath change all right six more to go carry on that is mark let's now move now to um luke elder luke but not elder luke luke 23 come on church of god verse 54 that day they're talking about the day that jesus was crucified <laughs> hey i know i'm going somewhere now brother wallace follow the preacher now no i'm not jump up too much about sister brad because me i said some teachments that's what jamaica called teachings you know when you say in a jamaica when i say teachings we say what teachments listen to the teachments now that day the day they crucified jesus was the what preparation the sixth day where you're supposed to what Bake where you are bake and what boy where you are boy shall i say press where you are press and ready for church come on now and the sabbath drew near and the women
men who had come with him, Jesus, from Galilee, followed after, and they observed, in other words, they marked the tomb and how his body was laid. Now, why did they want to know where the body was? As you just read earlier, they wanted to do the traditional bombing, embalming, and spicing up Jesus. They never want Jesus to just go down in the grave, like no jankro and the star stink they wanted to anoint his body with those special oils and those special herbs to maintain the body as long as possible and not only so the spirit had sown it in their heart somehow because the bible says that your servant shall not see corruption jesus was not to stay in the grave until he starts to run come on <coughs> watch me now hi so when the woman come down now they return after them mark and say, oh, at that grave, they didn't bury me now. Watch me now. Then they return and prepare the spices and fragrant oils. So some would say, oh, it come let them go prepare it now for go go back down at the tomb. Watch you now. Watch you now. Watch me now. And they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. According to the what? According to the what? Give me the quarter. What need to end away some? May I draw the spiritual belt now? Mm -hmm. Who caught the game? Put it there. And take away that bag. According to the what? Jesus is dead. And as I have established, Jesus is God. God in the flesh, brother Matthew. No, you see, if I'm Matthew, I'm going to understand. If I'm Jeremy and John, I'm going understand too. But can you imagine, God is dead. And you're going to mark in tomb, prepare the spices, and God keep Sabbath. You're not getting it. You're not getting it yet. The people knew that the Sabbath elder Cameron was such a holy day that it was not to be used to attend the dead. So how so much Saturday? And when we talk to you, love up your fears, fix your fears, and read the word of God. When I, when, I would, when I would attend some of my relatives' funeral in the past, one of my family members, um, 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 my sister P, that's my mother watching online, had the audacity to ask me, what if it is my mother's funeral? I say, exactly the point, and me decide when she bury. Yes. Not even God's funeral. Believers never went to on a Sabbath. And, that, and because Jesus is a Sabbath keeper, he never resurrected on the Sabbath because it would have caused disruption. So he wait until the Sabbath done. <laughs> Come on, Brother Brown. Hello, Church of God. So the Bible said that the woman mark it. And you never hear Jesus across say, I rap no the one me start rapping. Well, we can never come rub me down from Friday night. He never say a thing because of him give the command to keep the Sabbath. Come on, church of God. <laughs> Sister C, watch this now. So Adventists, you must stop God funeral on Saturday. Once upon a time, every funeral I knew happened on a Sunday. I'm mean, not all that old, so I'm mean, not a long time ago, about 20 years back. And then now, uh, guess what? It, a certain argument developed, Sister Fiona. The Sunday people started to say that the Adventists, them not easy, eh? They get to come to church or funeral on Sunday and go to church on Saturday. Well, Sunday is our Sabbath. So they started wholesale to come to the funerals on Saturdays. And for the Adventists fail to profane God's Sabbath, but before Gentiles, then God got to cock up a funeral on Saturday too. Don't get quiet on the preacher inside here tonight. Maybe you never knew that it was biblical. In the time of your ignorance, God wins, but now he commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent! So if I hear that any of my members attend funerals on Sabbath, we need to have a talk. After today, we need to have a talk. 
Because now you know what the truth says. Come on, church. Let me tell you, if you are wool and pan truth, you have to wool and pan everything. Because I say if you call if you wool and pan some truth, and when it's convenient, you let it go. When you go to man about truth, man never run away. So what did they do about my Jesus? Go to the next part now. Luke 24, the next chapter starts, verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, come on, church of God, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the what? The spices which they had prepared. And when they went, they did myself, we're going to roll with this stone for we. You know the rest of the story. Jesus was risen, so they never did for roll with a stone. Did, anything, did, did you read anything about what? Did, did, did the Sabbath being changed? No, another thing, the day that Jesus died, the Bible calls it the preparation day. Easter come. <laughs> yes, man, but not Jesus come. What do they call that Friday, everybody? The preparation, the preparation day in the Bible, they call it what? Good Friday. What do they call the Sunday that Jesus rose for on? Yeah? They call it what kind of Sunday? Um, Holy Sunday, Easter Sunday, and Pastor Sunday. Awesome. Let me tell you this now. So how comes some claim that they don't know which day is the Sabbath, but they know when is the preparation day and when is the resurrection day? Let me tell you, the Sabbath and the meat between the two slices of bread. Is the right in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, you think the earth, the judges are hard? You wait until God comes in judgment, sister comes, and begins to expose people who act as if they are ignorant of the truth and they fly up in their face disobediently. You can identify which day Jesus was killed and call it Holy Friday and turn it in a holiday. You can identify his resurrection morning, but you don't know which is the Sabbath. The Bible says it was in the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week he was resurrected. So you know which Sabbath day. You're not fool nobody in here. Go to John now. Sister John, son. Now on the first day of the week, here comes the fifth one. I'm going to now. John 20 verse 1. Of Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been what? Taken away from the tomb. Did you see anything about the Sabbath being changed to Sunday? That's the fifth one. Go to the sixth one. Then the Bible says now, John 20, 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Did you see anything about Sabbath being changed? Let's go to the seventh. Acts 20, verse 7. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul ready to depart the next day. The Bible says he what? He spoke. He spoke to them and continued his message until what? Midnight. Watch the audio cable tech team. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. Did you see anything about Sabbath change? Some say, you see it? Paul were, and the disciples broke bread on the first day. God never told you that you had to break bread only on the Sabbath day. Paul was getting ready to depart on a major journey. So he wanted to spend some extra time with the disciples. So we are not saying that you can't worship on Sunday night and on Monday morning and on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday but whereas you can worship on those days uh, go to do your work uh, and everything that is God fearing uh, when it comes to the seventh day everything is about the Lord let's go to the eighth and final one first corinthians 16 1 and 2 now concerning the collection of the saints as i have given orders to the churches of galatia so you must do also on the first day of the week let each one of you lay something aside storing up as he may prosper that there may be no collection when i come those who accepted the truth were thrown out of their homes those who accepted christ and the message of salvation some were thrown out of their homes those coming from the Jews. So Paul said to the bridge and said, we must look out for those who are thrown out. Let me tell you something. Some of you are going to get dashed out. If some of you are going to get dashed in the kingdom, you are going to get dashed out. Some are going to dash you out. Some are going to cut you off. But me, look here. I'd rather man cut me off and God lock me off. That man lock me off and God cut me off. The Bible says it is better to obey God rather than man. If they are going to dash out, dash out. Some of you know the truth, but because the bishop gave one big position, you can't give it up to come to God. Let me tell you something. Any bishop you choose God over, make sure so that bishop they have a heaven if you put your in. Yeah. 
Did you read anything about the Sabbath being changed? There goes eight texts in the Old Testament. Also, New Testament, none of them talked about the Sabbath being changed. The so question now, um, they said, oh, well, we actually keep Sunday as the Lord's Day or Sabbath now. We know that it used to be Saturday, but we do it so that we can honor the Lord's death. Come with me, everybody. According to 1 Corinthians 11, 26, uh, communion is the memorial of Christ's death, not Sabbath change. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Some say, because Jesus was risen on the first day, we have changed the Sabbath to the first day Sunday in honor of the resurrection. Follow me now. Baptism is the memorial of Christ's resurrection. Colossians 2 verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, in which you also what? Were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. So all those who will decide to be baptized this Saturday, you are going to be buried with Jesus in baptism. So you don't need to change Sabbath to remember the resurrection, not the life and death of Jesus. Communion and baptism do that. Hello, church of God. Important note, if Jesus had changed the Sabbath, huh, who would be the first persons to know? That is right. The disciples. So which day did they worship on? Let us see. Give me a little time. Acts chapter 13. Acts 14. Acts 27. Acts, listen now, listen. Acts 20, 13, 14. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the what? The Sabbath day and sat down. Was Jesus still on the earth, everybody? No, Jesus ascended before Pentecost. True or false? That is true. Let's carry on. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, they still didn't read law and prophets. The rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Hear this now. For those who dwell in Jerusalem, verse 27, and their rulers, because they did not know Jesus, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. Verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Oh, so our Gentiles, but they think, so they said Jews got church. Sabbath, but Gentiles got church Sunday. Hello, somebody. Give me a little time. Give me a little time. He begged that the, the Gentiles came and said, Paul, apostles will come back next week. Come preach that for me. The next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. By the way, how comes they did a real law in a church and grace did I teach? <laughs> Because law and grace are not held in dichotomy, the two are in isolation. Hello, somebody. You can't isolate them. Grace teaches. Here, verse 44 now. On the next Sabbath, the which Sabbath? So if you didn't think it was just a one-off Sabbath. The next Sabbath, Brother Neil, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. I wonder if we are going to have this this Saturday, Elder Kelly. I wonder if this next Sabbath coming up, we are going to see obedient people from Lincoln and Friendship and Clover Hill and Clapham and Walkerswood and Irons Mountain and Muddy. The next Sabbath is coming up day after tomorrow. Will you obey God for the next Sabbath? Almost the whole city came to hear the word of the Lord. Come on, church of God. Here, Acts 15, 21 now. Uh, and that is one chapter. For Moses has had throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Acts 16 verse 13. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made and we sat down and spoke to the women we met there. In other words, let's carry on. Acts 17, 1 to 4. Now, when they had passed through the Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Then Paul, as his custom was, just like his Savior Jesus, went into them and for three Sabbaths. What a plain word, people of God. Reason with them from the scriptures. Did you see anything about disciples changing Sabbath? Go verse 3. Explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. And saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded. And a great multitude of devout Greeks, Gentiles, and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. So who said Gentiles never got church on Sabbath? I which Bible you read that you know? 
Let me tell you some man, a foolishness some preacher go on with. Foolishness! Because of the same Bible when we read them, have to read. Acts 18, verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Gentiles. Waiting said, the Jews them did the inner church, but the Gentiles then did the pan line. <laughs> They never had the technology. Both Jews and Gentiles, Evangelist Kelly, were inside church every Sabbath. This is the book of Acts, when the early church started. And look at the precedents. Don't make nobody fool you. Beg a little time now, 902. Can I get a little time to just wrap it up now? Both Jews and Gentiles kept the Sabbath after Jesus went back to heaven. So when did Sunday keep him coming to Christianity? Who called the game, Elder Staple? Answer. Decades later on, when the Roman Catholic Church changed to, to, to teach a thing to change what? Times and laws. <laughs> but can you give something, yes, sir? You must learn how to read the prophetic word. That's why I'm worried how some people say they have the spirit of prophecy. And they are prophesy a church. And yet I be a lie, they are preach. A one commandment has a time base to it. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Notice a one commandment has a time element. And it's the fourth commandment. It says six days. That's a specific time. You shall labor and do all your what? Works. Come on my visitors. But the which day? The seventh day. A specific period of time. Is God's Sabbath. See the time there. And is it a law? Yes. So God prophesied in Daniel 7.25. That there will be an organization who will seek to change God's Sabbath. Hundreds of years before. That's why some of them preach Daniel and Revelation because he will expose them. Then tell us it's a lock up book. No matter nobody fool it, they got school too. It cannot be revelation and yet it lock up. When something is revealed, it is opened up. Come on, church of God. So who did it? What emperor? Jump with the preacher down. Constantine in AD 321. On the venerable day he wrote of the sun, let the magistrates and the people residing in the cities rest and let all worship workshops be closed. In the country, however, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits. On which venerable day? The day of the sun. Sun day. You see where the thing come in? The Roman Empire was crumbling. They were losing popularity. And they were wondering, how can we get a little boost? You know, how can we revitalize our political standing? They had always had a working relationship with the Jews. And now the Christians have now started to spread like wildfire. And the Jews were becoming Christians. So they recognized that they had to suppress. You know what? If you can't beat them, join them. Hello, somebody. Listen to this now, what that history shows up. Go and research this online. Because it, is of, it often happens, happens that another day is not so suitable for grain sowing or for vine planting, lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. Listen to this. Unquestionably, the law, either ecclesiastical or civil, by which the sabbatical observance of that day is known to have been ordained, is the Edict of Constantine in AD 321, Shortly after which, uh, the council of Laodicea gave it the approbation. What church did it? Come here now. AD 364, history time. Hear what the Catholic Church writes. Listen to what uh, uh, one, one of their reverend writes. Christians shall not judaize and be idle on Saturday Sabbath, but shall work on that day. Touch your neighbor and say, what a slackness. God tell us that six days you must labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. When the organization who said Peter is the first Pope Catholic Church and that God gave him the key to bind and to lose, they claim that right now we are changing it. And listen, we don't want nobody lazy. But Saturday you must walk. God say you must rest on it. Man say you must walk. And who send them? And who send them? Come on, church of God. Come on, church of God. But shall work, they say, on that day. But the Lord's day, hear the fiestiness. The Lord's day, they say. Hmm. They shall not especially, they shall what? They shall, they shall especially honor. And as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. 
You see this, this organization is the only church institution in history that practiced excommunication. When you were found to be in violation of what they claim is the law of God, you were actually excommunicated. And what they were saying to you, by the fact that we have put you out, you are not going to go into heaven either. So many people in not wanting to be shut out of heaven because they lock up the scriptures so people could get access to it. Them obey what the priest them tell them because then the thing said them are going to go to hell. Come on, I'm not done yet. So let me tell you, who called the game? They have been trampling on God's law and God's Sabbath station. God's Ten Commandments tell you that you must remember the Sabbath day and it also tell you enough to worship graven image. At which church I know we're full of drawing? At which church I know we're full of statue? Let me say amen for now. Amen. At which church? So let look, look at how they change the commandments. Because they want to put drawing and statue and Mary for your bow down and worship too. The first commandment, them say, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. But look what they do. Then dash out the one we're saying if you bow down towards anyone. Graven image or any likeness of me in heaven or earth or under the earth. And skip to the next one. We say what? You must not take the Lord's name in vain. Then they just casually say, you must remember to keep the Sabbath holy. And how did they end up with ten? Then cut the last one in a two. The one was if you covet your neighbor, wife, not anything that is a neighbor, then put it into two clauses. Feed them ten commandments, not much the biblical ten commandments. Am I talking to truth? Reverend Peter Grayman in the Converse Catechism of the Catholic Doctrine. And whenever you are becoming a Catholic, and I'm not here to tear down people, I'm here to tear down an institution of lies. Because let me say this um, I'm very unapologetically there are good people in every church. Pentecostal and Catholic and Jehovah's Witness. Some of them even nicer than some of me. That is why God says they are sincere, Ella Kelly. Other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I will call. And there shall be one shepherd and one fold. God is calling some bishops to repent and keep the Sabbath. God is calling some praise and worship leaders to repent and keep the Sabbath. Calling out uh, some persons who have been violating to repent and keep the Sabbath. We need to turn some churches into Seventh-day Adventist churches. So if we don't have enough space in, in Monique and Lincoln and the rest of the churches, let's obey what the Lord says and turn them into Sabbath churches. And those who feel troubled tonight, feel good say you came. Because everything me say, me show you the scripture feed. When certain preachers preach, they not quote nothing. Because they don't have any back it in, but me full of ammunition. Some need to have a conversation with them bishop this weekend. Hello? Hear the man say. So they have a question and answer thing that when you are becoming a part of the, 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 the organization, you have to answer. Listen, what is the third commandment? Read church. The third commandment is remember that thou keep the Sabbath day. That in God's way is the fourth commandment. Hear the next one now. Which is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. The Roman Catholic Church was long before Pentecostal. Pentecostalism came about in 1900. And you are going to hear one other night that according to Revelation chapter 17, there is a woman with many daughters because the false church, which is this church, has bred many offsprings. So Rome doesn't hide and tell us, it's because we believe that Sunday is the seventh day. That is why we were keeping it. Then tell us straight, say, look here, we know say Saturday the seventh, but we are Sunday people now. Next question in the book. Go and research them on your Google. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. But see ya. Uh, so they mistook what Peter was told that whatsoever you bind on earth shall be what? Bound in heaven. Whatever you uh, loose on earth, loose in heaven. What are we then loose? Next question. Why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? Read the answer. The church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on Sunday and the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles on a Sunday. Did that give any authorization for a change of day? No man has the power and authority to change God's law. 
By what authority did the church substitute Sunday for Saturday? The church substituted Sunday for Saturday by the plentitude of that divine power which Jesus Christ bestowed upon her. What a cockiness. What does the third commandment command? The third commandment commands to sanctify Sunday as the Lord's day, which day the Bible calls the Lord's day according to Mark 2, 27, 28. The Sabbath day, which is Saturday. What does the third commandment forbid? The third commandment forbids that one, the omission of prayer and divine worship. Two, all unnecessary servile work. Three, whatever what hinders the keeping of the Lord's day as holy. Everything that God vested in the Sabbath, then take you put in a Sunday. Is the, de is the desecration of the Lord's day a grievous matter? Hear the answer they give. Read it. The desecration of the Lord's day is a grievous matter in itself, though it admits of little light matter. Do these people sound like godly? Satan doesn't come to you straightforwardly. Satan is known as a what? A deceiver. A deceiver does not show his true intention. That is why he uses serpent. He works subtly and cunningly. If Satan it ain't clear, you will run from it. So Satan always gives you a six for a nine or maybe a three for an eight because the deal is not closed. So now everything was a church, you must run go in. And everything with all and every old pad we knock, you must dance. Somebody with us one God church come in and jump over and say, La church hot, what have you learned? <laughs> Listen to Cardinal um, um, Bernard Griffin. He says, I'm Bernard Cardinal Griffin, in the fate of millions, the fate of millions. Listen to what he wrote. Yeah, it is to be noted that the church, talking about Catholic Church, did not change the divine law obliging men to worship. They merely changed the day on which public worship was to be offered. You see the fierceness, everybody? No fall asleep with them. We soon wrap it up. Thanks for the extra time tonight. But since Saturday, hear the man that dash word now. Panapastor. Pastalic. Hear the man that dash word Pan Baptist. Hear the man that dash word now Pan Pentecost and others. But since Saturday, here comes the Catholic man. Not Sunday is specified in the Bible. Isn't it curious that non-Catholics who profess to take their religion directly from the Bible and not from the church, as in the Catholic church, observe Sunday instead of Saturday? The man said, since Saturday and not Sunday, is the biblical Sabbath. Isn't it curious that non-Catholics who claim that they take their religion straight from the Bible and not from the church observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Ask your pastor when your denomination started and where they get the Sunday concept from. Yes, of course, him say, it is consistent, but this change was made about 15 centuries before Protestantism was born. Hello? And by that time, the custom was what? Universally observed. Some people never know elder way some. So God, I will forgive them. But after tonight, you have to change. You know why you never know? If you're born, you can't get to read Bible before you become intelligent and knowledgeable before you decide where you go. Anywhere your mama care, you go. Sorry, sorry. Anywhere your mother brings you, you have to go. Anywhere your father takes you, you have to go. So if they go to a Sunday church, where they like to take you to bless? They're going to take you to be dedicated there. The next thing you're on the Sunday school, the next thing you're turn preacher, the next thing you're on choir, the next thing you're turn deacon. So by your grow big, you're well cement tonight, you know. Bridget, I know that it is not an easy thing to do. But we have many Adventists nowadays, stalwart Adventists, who have come through the same systems that you are now in. And what they were, they made the sacrifice. Some get a run for the money. One of our, one former Pentecostal bishop was at the height of his Pentecostal bishopric when he discovered it. And you know what the man admitted? The man admitted, say, every time he preached, the Sabbath was bugging him. And members were asking him about it. And he could understand, says Evangelist Asin, how comes, you know, the ink can preach about it because he was not taught and he said every time bishop are dead and you go to bishop bedside and bishop now making peace with god bishop admits that the sabbath is real just yes, so when he decided to become a seventh day adventist then strip him down then take what he suit them take what the house take what the car and all the wife get take away but anything you have to lose to save your soul lose it Anything you have to lose to see a soul, what must you do? Somebody, I say, lose it. For what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? Me soon finish, man. Give me a little time. Just soon finish. Listen now. So they have continued. 
the custom that are the other Sunday churches, the daughters of the harlot in Revelation, even though it rests upon the authority of Catholic Church and not upon the explicit text in the Bible, that observance remains as a reminder, hear them now, of the mother church from which the non-Catholic sects, S-E-C-T-S, broke away. So every day when Catholics see people are worshiping, so they never say, could them they? I talk about them are Protestant and they are not committed to us. You know, so say, we then still a follow. <laughs> Hello, church of God. No, make nobody fool you. Revelation 18, 1 verse 5 says, after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried with a mighty voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. I said, Babylon is fallen. Come out of here, my people. The Bible calls those religious systems that are opposing the word of God Babylon. You remember the Tower of Babel last night, which means what? Confusion. That is where the word Babylon comes from. God's spiritual Babylon speaks about religious organizations where I make pure nice and I preach false doctrine and I deceive people. God knows there's some good people they're not the Baptists, some sweet people they're not the Catholics, some nice people they're not the Jehovah's Witness, some, 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 some sincere people in the apostolic. And you can't name the rest of church them. And God said to them, say, my friend, my son, my daughter, Babylon is fallen. Come out. Hmm. Matthew 15 verse 9. I'm touching down now. The song is going to be praised. I'm my singer. I'm trust and obey. And in vain, they worship me. Teaching as what? Doctrines, the commandments of men. Who quote the game? The Catholic Church quote the game. And others got to take on the same thing. And I quote the game. God have one what? We are in a few with them in our game, Elder Kelly. We know so boy, we have what? Blank, straight up to six. But God damn it, we then go up to seven. And when God goes on, uh, and lick a double seven, the man then go put one double, one double S. Come on, church of God. Are you following the preacher tonight? Jesus said, in vain, they worship me, teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men. If you are keeping a commandment that God ever gave you, let me tell you, you could not sing like angel. Ask Lucifer if he can sing. The Bible said, Lucifer, listen man, Lucifer was able to sing harmony by himself. If you ever sing harmony, you have to have somebody to sing alto, one for tenor, soprano, and one for bass, and little baritone. Am I talking truth? When Lucifer starts singing, you say, what a nice quartet. When you look, is that a quartet? It's a solo. You could have can't preach down the whole place in there. Let me tell you something. If you are not keeping God's commandment, God says you are worshipping in vain. Can you imagine after you're spending all your life at one church, and then you come a judgment day, and you take king from left to right? I hear you here now, Jesus. I go say, I wonder which color man should I go put me in. I wonder if you call up come like, hi, Jesus. <laughs> Depart from me. Oh, who's behind me? <laughs> you see him when me at all. <laughs> Let me see the hands of those who want to go to hell. If you really want to go to hell, raise your hand. All those who want to go to hell, raise your hand. Come on, man. You don't want to go to hell. Let me tell you then, if you don't want to go to hell, you have to obey the word of God. Hear this, I'm soon done. First John 2, 4 to 6. Read with me. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. What John never knows that Jesus nailed to the cross and rise from the grave and gone back to heaven. Why is he still preaching this? Because the disciples never understood the commandments to be away with. Done away with. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a what? Is a liar. And the truth is not in him. When I grew up in Portland, you tell lie. They usually have a little thing. You lie, you lie, you lie. You suck out the donkey eye. You married Gingy Fly last year, July. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him, ought himself also to walk as he walked. Which day did Jesus go to church, everybody? The Sabbath. Now in 1 Samuel 15, I'm now summarizing as I wrap it up. When God told Samuel to destroy both man and beast, he took back the best sheep and the best of the animals. And when Samuel was called, the prophet, to go to Saul, because he said, listen, I can't bear with this man, you know. 
because as a king he's not obeying me because I told him what to do and he has done otherwise so Samuel was sent to rebuke Saul and when he when Saul saw him Saul said oh Samuel the man of God all that the Lord has said we have done it so here Samuel no if you have obeyed God what is all this man I'm bleating we hear I hear the king making excuse the men have kept back the best sheep in order to offer sacrifices to the Lord you don't believe say, sister Stephanie if then they say you know we keep back the sheep we're gonna make some nice lamb shops with some rosemary and make you reduce it some balsamic reduction they will not say you can imagine it is a man can cook you can imagine if they did do it for themselves you could not understand it you know when God rebuke him but the man they say God we carry back for me, I go somewhere with this. You know, I'm gonna finish by 9 30. Give me tonight. You, know? you have a rest night. Give me till 9 30. God said to him, God said, Samuel thought he was gonna get some affirmation. But instead, he got somewhat condemnation. Hear what Samuel said. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears and lowing of the oxen which I hear? And he said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. So then, believe said, God, God said, Oh, but things say, I go near me, but like I'm here, Kaifa, it is okay. Let me tell you something the best of your sin is still sin you know that so Samuel asks verse 22 has the Lord as great delight sister Bridget in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord read church of God behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. When you know say God say you must keep the Sabbath and all the other commandments, I just still ignore them, still rebel. You come like Obia man. Yes. You know what God is saying? Is as it means that the same place where the witch them I go, a same place you go go to. Hello. And stubbornness is as the sin of what somebody idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. When God called Cain and Abel to worship, both brought their offerings. And look here, nobody think about that spoiled fruit Cain bring come. And the best melon they did. The best grapes. The best everything. The best East Indian. But God never asked for what? For fruit. God asked for what? A sacrifice. You're not killing fruits. And what did God do? God what? Took Abraham, Abel's offering, but he had no respect for that of Cain. Because no matter how you're offering big, no matter how much tithe you're giving there, no matter which position you have in there, if you are worshiping in a church, whether I name Adventist or otherwise, and you are not being led to keep the commandments of God, God not business, you're still gambling. And your money is going to be spent to help some people to make it in the kingdom and lock your heart. Hello, church of God. Revelation, and I'll preach this another time. 14, cause us to come out of Babylon. Jesus has a last day warning there. He said the angel flies across the sky, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. A judgment. Oh, you know, see what going on in the world now. And worship him. Whom we must worship. Who made what? The heaven and the earth. See this Sabbath come out again. Yeah? The sea and the fountains of water. Which commandment is that? Tina? The Sabbath. And there followed another angel saying what? Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. That great city because she made all nations drink up the wine of the round of her fornication. Revelation 14 verse 12. The preacher is touching down. Sing that. Take your position. Here is the patient of the saints. Saints are those who are saved. You know, not sinners. Do you know who saints are? Read church. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. <laughs> Who is Satan the dragon as I preached the other night in chapter 12 angry with her. Revelation 12 17 and the dragon was wrought with the woman that's the church and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Who are the woman's seed? Who are the church of God? Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We'll talk more about that. Is the word clear tonight? Come out of her my people. In Eden God reserved one tree for himself. And that is the one that Adam and Eve were led to eat from. In Eden, God reserved one institution of marriage for himself. Man and woman. Man take it on man and beast. Man and man. Woman and woman. In Eden, God reserved one day for himself. The seventh day Sabbath. And man tell us, well, I'm for the first one. See them face there. 
pontiffs and popes and cardinals. You see how they look Chris, like Christmas posts? Be a deception. Unapologetically. We're going to talk about the mark of the beast one night. The Bible says that the system that creates this false day of worship, the whole world will wander after it. Anytime the leader goes around, you know what they say, CNN and BBC? Look here, man, my Bible don't talk up the things. Look on their face. They look like them are the humblest things since sliced bread. But the Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. Tonight, as I close, Psalm 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Welcome, yeah. And thy law is the truth. John 4, 24. Sanctify them. I mean, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through that truth. Thy word is true. Do you have the Holy Spirit? John 16, 13. 12 and 13. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of what? Truth is come. He will guide you into what church? All truths. Uh, 1 John 2, verse 4. He that says he knows him and keep it not his commandments is a what? Liar. I'm the what? Truth is that in him. What truth? Jesus. John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father and but by me. But my pastor don't tell me this, pastor. John say it rough tonight. It rough, it rough, it rough. Uh, Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Uh, he, as he said, and shall he not do it? Or as he spoken, and shall he not keep it? What have you to say about it, Paul? Romans 3, verse 4. God forbid, yea. Let God be true, and every man a liar. Tonight, Jesus has one word. I thank you for the extra time. And every time, you go preach so long. If you love me, keep my commandments. What the music first? Wait, what the music first? Wait until I'm done. If you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, Lord. Devante, was the word clear tonight? If Pitney can understand it, everybody can understand it. Tonight, I'm making two calls. Call number one, you are a Christian but you are not keeping the Sabbath. But you have acknowledged tonight from the presentation that the Sabbath is to be kept. And you want to say, God, I am sorry. I am sorry. You know my heart. You know I am genuine. I was following the thing thinking it was the right thing. But now I have seen the truth. And with your help, I will prepare to walk in it. Come to the altar. I'm not sing it. That I'm my first call. I want to make a bold step tonight. So I'm going to call all the bishop on you tonight. But come. Yeah, man. You, you, I'm very plain tonight. Online, if that is you, fill out the link that is now in the chat and send it in. Come. Who's going to be the first? I'm coming to the rest of the persons now. You are Christian. No, By the way, you do not become a Christian when you keep everything where God says. When you accept Jesus, you're a Christian. But in order for you to become a saved Christian in the end, you have to endure to the end of being everything the Spirit reveals to you. So what you are doing now is to acknowledge that, Lord, I may have missed this, but now you have revealed it. By your help, I'm going to walk in it. Who's going to be the first? You are a Christian, but you have recognized tonight that, oh my God, I never knew that the Sabbath was actually supposed to be binding and that it is the seventh day. And I was keeping the first thinking that it was right. But tonight, I'm going to do what you say by your help. Who's going to be the first? Are you going to hold up? Are you going to hold back? While I'm waiting for that category, you are here tonight. You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. But you want to say, God, I want to walk in faithfulness and obedience to your will. You may be a backslider, but tonight you want to say, God, I'm coming back. I don't want to be a part of Babylon. The fallen. I want to be a part of those who want to be saved. If you want to go to hell, that's fine. Although I don't know what in hell you're looking for. But if heaven is what you want for yourself, and you are not yet converted. Come to the altar. We want to pray with you tonight. Leave a seat and come. Along with those I call first. Sing that song. Who's going to be first? Who's going to be first? Online scan the code. Click the link. Who's going to be first? Walk to this altar. Step up poorly and put the devil to shame. When we walk with Who's going to be first? Come. Who's going to stand for Jesus first? God is calling somebody tonight to stand on this side. Who will be first? Leave a seat and come. Leave a seat and come. Who is going to be first? Who is going to be bold tonight to stand up for the truth? Come to the altar. We want to pray with you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Stand up for the truth tonight. Who will come first? Who will first come? 
sing that chorus. Trust and obey. Come. Who is going to be first? Who is going to be first? want to stand on the Lord's side, leave the seat and come. Come on somebody, rise up and stand for Jesus. Click the link online and fill out the form. Who will be next? Who will be next? Come. 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 Step off from Satan tonight. And walk for Jesus. If you love God, keep His commandments. If you love God, come. 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 Who else will come? Before the final verse is up, the music is playing silent. Quietly run and the music is playing quietly a bit. Wait a moment. Shake my hand, my sister. Come. Elder James, please come to pray a prayer for me. Elder Jonathan James, come along. Who else is gonna come? Don't be ashamed of Jesus tonight. A plain truth you got tonight. Plain thus say the Lord. No cuddling the device fable. Come shake my hand, my brother. If you're on the outside, come. If you're on the, the outside, come. If you're under the tent, come. Don't be don't make a pride. Push on one side. Come evangelist, um, Devante Williams. Yes, come. Those who are uh, online, click on the link and fill out your decision for the Lord. Come. Come and shake my hand and then you go around there. Can you help me? Um, are you help me to preach a sermon tonight? So go, go, go to the front as well. Come. Come. Well, sing that song. Sing that song. We're almost done. Come. Shake my hand. Come. 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 Who will stand in obedience to the will of God tonight? Leave your seat and come. Leave your seat and come. Come, step up. Step up for righteousness tonight. And the joy. Come right here, Elder James. Come right here. Please bring in my microphone. After them. the church to stand and sing along with me if you will obey God's Sabbath and all his commands and do it like all the Bible says stand and sing with me for there's no other way somebody else needs to walk tonight come to be happy come on yes when the song is done we are done come you're coming anybody else? And come and stand for Jesus. Oh, we'll walk by his side. Come shake my hand, brother. Come shake my hand. Come shake my hand. Hallelujah. What he says, we will do. There he says, we will do. and worship the Lord tonight. Trust and obey. Come on now. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. Come, brother. Don't be afraid if you're coming. Come. To be happy. Who else will come? Jesus. But to trust and obey. Trust Sing that last verse now. Hold the music first. Come. Fellowship sweet. Fellowship sweet. We will see. You can't sit at his feet if you don't obey his voice. Or we'll walk by his side in the way. Come, don't be afraid tonight. What he says we If you're not up be a way, say down your soul. You're not going to do it up, so welcome, my brother. Good to have you tonight. Come, who else will come? and obey the voice of God. Come lift your hands and sing. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. We end the song now. 